Hello, welcome to a slightly different episode of Roto. Today, I'm joined by John Ashley of Vision Avenue Wedding Films. Hello, how are you? I wanted to bring you something a little bit different. Having known John for a very long time, he's been in the world of wedding films now for 18 months, and he has gone from starting with absolutely nothing to what I would say is a very successful business in such a short space of time. I've been doing films and photography for over 12 years and I wanted to bring you some information from someone that's doing it and launching their business right now. They're in the thick of it and it's doing really well. It's not doing that bad. Yeah. It's going good. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, 18 months. You're, I could say you're my inspiration for it. Really. Okay. <laughs> so <Fair enough. laughs> It gives you an idea. That I think with any advice that I could give, it's not really relevant to how the world is now. I have the business set up and John has gone from how many weddings? So you say you set your business up 18 months ago now. 18 months ago, so in... 2018, how, how did 2018 treat you? 2018 was good. I had 29, 28, 29, yeah, 29 weddings, um, which was amazing. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything more really mm. um, and it's just yeah it has gone from strength to strength touch wood okay so would you say so the last and that's all wedding films that's just wedding films just wedding films yeah I know you're looking films. at moving into photography as well I and that's something that you're had a dabble yeah and I know already your wife is a successful wedding photographer as it is yeah so that's she's a, a seasoned pro everyone in the family you know them yes <laughs> Actually, yeah. more than that. So it's you have got an advantage because you've had a lot of people that you could ask for advice from, and I know that. But if you had maybe three pieces of advice just off the top of your head, what would you say are the sort of the key things that you need to do to get things moving? Oh, persistence is a big one. Um, I found success with wedding fairs mainly. Um, I found a fair bit of success with Instagram, to be honest. I know you still haven't dabbled in the world of Instagram. Not on Instagram. I have much. got an Instagram account for my wedding photography. Um, but I've booked a couple of weddings from Instagram just by posting pictures of my food. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're you're booking wedding films purely by using Instagram itself. Purely by yeah, Instagram. Um, okay. I booked two late last year from it so looking at December time um, for for Instagram um, Facebook obviously is a, a fairly big one but I gotta be honest even though from the accident you can tell them across the water in Wales since the bridge tolls have gone it's made a massive difference yeah, I must say, for it's, those that don't know, in the southwest, we're, we're, I'm based in the southwest. John based in South Wales. We're actually just a matter of miles apart, but there is this very large bridge, um, <laughs> and for the last twenty years, however long it's been there, it's been an expensive toll. Not not to stop you from going over, but it just made a difference. Um, since the first of January this year, the tolls were scrapped. The bridge was brought back by the government, and the tolls were scrapped. And that's made a huge difference just for, for both of us to get yeah. over the bridge. Absolutely, absolutely. Sort of to catch up like this, but also for any business, and it's had a big effect on the sort of southwest of uh, the southeast of Wales and the southwest of the UK. Um, there's a lot of factors going back and forth, which has made it really easy. So that's quite interesting that you found yeah. you're coming this way for a lot of work, and for the first ten years of my business, I was going over South Wales quite a lot. There was a lot of other companies that weren't willing to travel. I think that's probably something you've yeah. got to be willing to yeah. travel. Got to be, got to be 100%, 100%. I mean, I've got weddings now this year, Devon, Southampton, Dorset, um, and you've just got to go with where it takes you. You can stay over the night. Yeah. Factor that in with the costs. And it, it sounds it sounds like that's they're all very close by, but they're not here in the UK. That's, that's considered quite a trip. If you're going from South Wales to Devon, that's a good. It's a good couple of hours. Good couple it's of hours drive. It's not a one-day yeah. event, and then you're looking at, do I have overnight stays and everything else? But you've got to be willing to travel. 
especially when starting out and that mm-hmm. I don't think that's changed no. that's the same for me 12 years ago as it probably has been for you last I think year. The biggest piece of advice well biggest thing that I learned from is YouTube um, loads of editing tips uh, loads of how to's and I don't think you had that back when you started no, many YouTube, months ago. YouTube was, there was nobody like exist. me giving advice. There's so many photographers and videographers on YouTube now giving you all the tips and tricks. Just the other day I learned a really cool uh, tip with the drone to get what looks like a really exciting movement of a car, of a wedding car, and I can't wait to try that out. That just wasn't around. It wasn't, wasn't around no. years ago. And no. it's, that's true. Um, there is, I will one day, show you my very first video which was on YouTube and that's that is, has been on YouTube that. I haven't even seen that it's been on YouTube for 11 years it's so bad it's so bad <laughs> but I've kept it there it's not under my normal channel for my business page but it's there and it is still it's still there and it still gets views amazingly but it's bad um, and it just shows how far YouTube has come just in the last probably five years it's just become um, it's, a hub for everything you yeah, want to know massive massive um, I I edit with Final Cut, I'm a Mac user, um, so learning how to do that from scratch, I, I've most probably still been doing it now, but YouTube gave me a massive <laughs> push and a help where I could just watch the videos, stop it, play it, try it on the computer, then go back to it, so yeah. it was yeah. So it was taking, huge... taking as much advice online as you can then? Yes. Be willing to travel, taking as much advice as you can online. Um, I think what everyone wants to know is what camera they should buy, and there's never a right or wrong answer, but let's say, well, how did you start? What did you start with? We can see you've already got a lot of Sony gear on the table, but we know you didn't start with that. Nope, didn't start with Sony. I started with Panasonic. Um, I started with a GH4R, Um, one of the reasons why it's got unlimited recording time. Um, so that was kind of my safe camera, stuck a nice wide lens on there um, and started with that. I also started with a Panasonic G80, which still I think now I'm going to be very disappointed to get rid of it. Mm. It's a gorgeous camera. The colours from Panasonic are fantastic, but as everyone knows, there is downfalls to the Panasonic system. Yes. Um yeah, I think it's the main things are focusing with Panasonic and that's that's easy for us to, to say moving over to Sony and it's very easy this is being recorded on Sony right now. Um ironically using manual focus, but that's because we've got a lot of gear on the table <laughs> yeah. and we don't want it to pull away from our beautiful faces. But if with with regards to the Panasonic it is I think a great starter system still. Um my overhead camera rig here is the G seven, which was the first I think um, Panasonic camera to be like, okay, this does 4K, yeah. 1080, yeah. 50 frames or 60 frames per second for a nice bit of slow mo. Um, it wasn't stabilized so like the GH4, and GH4R isn't a stabilized sensor. Um, but I think, I think it's still the place to start if you're looking for a camera to just get you going, even if it was just one camera and you're thinking, right, this year I want to shoot some wedding films for free, so there's no pressure. But to get your sample reel together, that's the main thing you need to do. I would highly recommend the G80. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, G80, G85, as they call it in, I think, well, they call it a G85 in America. Yeah. I think okay. it's G85 around Europe yeah. as well. And that is, that's basically the newer version of the G7 because yeah. it has a stabilized sensor. Yeah. Um, the only downside is not unlimited recording. But no. that's why you had the GH4R. That's why GH4R, yeah. Because you had unlimited recording, so you had your wide angle and your creative camera yes being stabilized on a gimbal or whatever you want to use um, and there's still a lot to be said for the Panasonic range if I had the money today I would still start with I probably keep my G7 which I still use as a wide angle um, and for wedding video work I still use the GH5 and I and I still absolutely love it focusing is a little bit trickier than if I was using the a7 III I have the a7 III for photography and John has been pushing me to use Sony for (laughs) my wedding video work. Absolutely. And looking at some of the work that John's been producing in the last 12 months has sort of sold me on the idea, to be honest. Um, I'm reluctantly holding out for the a7S III, but 
not really sure how and when that's going to arrive and how expensive it's going to be and if it will work but I'm very seriously considering Sony because of John, what John's been doing. So, tell us a little about what you use today, 18 months in. 18 months in and now. what are you using? Yeah, I use two Sony A6500s. Um, I have ordered the Sony A6400, which was supposed to be here today. Yes, we're a bit disappointed. We're not yes. doing an unboxing for you today, I'll no, be totally honest. It was, uh, it was a bit disappointing, so, uh, Bit of a delay on the delivery for that, so I'm a bit gutted with that. Um, but we will do an unboxing soon. Um, lenses wise, I use a 18 to 105 uh, f4 as my kind of run and gun. Um, only had it a couple of weeks, done a couple of tests, used it as a wedding uh, about a week ago, and it's fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I love the power zoom. A lot of people have said that the power zoom is very, very slow. I haven't found that. Um, I found it to, to be great. Um, yeah, F4, a little bit of a pain in, in low light, but obviously with Sony's you can crank the ISO up a little bit to kind of counteract to that. Um, my more cr so would you say with, with the Sony, so even though you're using F4, I know that's the other slight downfall of the Panasonic being a smaller sensor not quite as good in the low light, especially on an evening. Mm -hmm. Have you found even with F4 that the low light is still that much better? Yeah, um, one of the venues that I shot at last week using it, it's it's quite dark in the evening, they haven't got very many disco lights. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think I put the maximum, I put the ISO up to was around 6,000, 8,000. Okay. And touch of, the noise reduction, um, but nothing, nothing major, and I still had a really, really usable shot. Okay. Um, and that was that was first dance, so important, important clips. Yeah, I think especially around the evening, first dance fireworks and sparklers have become very popular in the last year. Mm -hmm. So you do need that good performance in low light, uh, which I am finding that the Sony will be something that I start moving over to. I think. Yeah purely for that. It'd be interesting to see the files. In fact, if this goes to plan, you would have seen a clip just then of what that looks like. Um, and you can just see the quality of the filming that John can produce from these things are fantastic. And I haven't paid him to say that either. <laughs> That's very good, the work is fantastic. <laughs> um, the other lens that I use, um, I know a lot of people use this, especially on the 6500, yes. is the Sigma 16mm 1.4. It is a brilliant, Brilliant, brilliant lens. Um, so, what's that equivalent to on the twenty-four mil? I believe. Twenty-four mil equivalent. Okay. Um, equivalent, one point five crop. Um, it normally this will go on my gimbal, and I will kind of my kind of signature-ish first dance shots are on a gimbal, kind of spiraling around the couple. Yeah. Um, when I was using the G eighty, the Panasonic. I struggled a little bit with focusing, especially when I was pulling in and pulling back out with okay. the gimbal. With the Sony, I've not had any issues at all. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's again. definitely a big benefit. Of yeah. The focusing system on the Sony is, is that much better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then in my camera bag as well, I've got the Sigma 30mm, which is a bit tighter. I think it's equivalent to about a 45 it's not quite that's 50. Right. Is it 1.5 crop more or less or 1.6? 1 1.5 crop. 1.5. Yeah. 1.5 okay. on the stone, the 6500. I'm still talking old money with Canon, which was 1.6 on my crop sensors. Yeah. And even that, trying to do the math. We're not trying to be awkward. We're just trying to give you an idea of what the full frame equivalent is like. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I use the 30 mil 1.4 as well, which is a bit tighter, a bit more of a portrait-ish lens, not yeah. full on portrait, but that's another great lens. It is really, really sharp, and for the price, it's a great lens. Yeah, have we got an idea of price of what um, the Sigmas are at the moment. I think I paid at the time. I think I paid for the, the sixteen mil was three nine nine. That's um, not bad at all. Pounds, um, and, and that's just native Sony mount. Native Sony mount. Yeah, yeah. no, no. And that adapters. is crop sensor only. As I understand it. These are crops, yeah. These are crop yeah. sensor only. So but only I for have... the 6400 or 6500s, not the A7 III. 
but I have seen someone use it on an A7 III on a YouTube video. Okay. And they said it, they put, put the say A7 III into APS-C mode, and it was amazing. Yeah, that's the one benefit with the A7 III's is you've got, um, you can shoot in a crop mode effectively, yeah. so you can still use it. Um, I haven't tested that out. We may have a little test on that in a minute, but that'll be for another video, I think. <laughs> um, but yes, it's very much, it's very much the, the quality you can get from these Sigma lenses, and they are yeah. the contemporary range. Is that what they're Contem called? Yeah, contemporary ranges. Three of the contemporary ranges. Fantastic. I am missing one at the moment, which I'm going to be buying soon, which is the 56 mil, which is 84 mil equivalent. Ah, yes, yes, that's just come out. That has long come out, yeah. and the tests I've seen on that are brilliant. Yeah, that does look good. That's certainly something that um, I'm keen to play with. And we've got a few weddings together coming up yes. this year, and we will be geeking out and playing with all this gear. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to, to talk about now, John is very technically minded with a lot of his gear he does. He's a bigger geek than I am, um, <laughs> and he and he does go into the detail. Um, and the other thing with yourself is sound. Yes. Now I'm, or you must have good sound, especially for ceremony, speeches, first dance in the wedding world, any corporate interviews that you do. You need good sound. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no there's no way around it. Um, we're actually only using just to film us both the Rode Video Micro. Yeah. Not the Mic Go. Not the pro, but the micro. It's confusing. <laughs> it's confusing. It's confusing. Um, but that's actually one of the cheapest. I think it's the second cheapest road video mic, uh, video mic that they do, and the sound on it, as you can hear, is fantastic. And I hardly yeah. do any editing to it. A little bit of bass, and it, what you're hearing is is straight into a Tascam recorder, one of these. Yep. Um, and the sound quality of that is lovely. Now I will say, for me, for weddings, I tend to stick with a road video micro, the original. No. The Rode Video Mic. Rode Video Mic, video yeah. Video Mic. With the red with mount. With the red mount on it, uh, the Ryko mount on it. And that's, I have that mount on top of the camera with a micro, and I've started to get into just putting a, a lapel mic on the groom. Um, I was quite reluctant to do it for a while. I didn't want it in the shots, and I'm thinking of it from a photography point of view, but it's quite easy to take out of an image, and the sound quality you'll get is worth it. Now, you take it one step further. I do. I <laughs> when do. it comes to sound. Now, it does involve a little bit more editing, but that's not such a bad thing, especially when you can capture perfect sound. Yes. So like tell us what you use <laughs> for your standard wedding ceremony. Standard wedding ceremony. Um, I come from an audio background, so college, after college, I done a lot of uh, audio sound engineering. Um, so yeah, sound is very important to me. Like I say, all wedding video videographers sound, if you, if you, if you mess up on the ceremony or mess up on the speeches, yes, <laughs> it's game over. Completely game over. We've touched wood. We've both been all right for many years. And I, absolutely. You know, this absolutely. is why you use multiple cameras. Yes. Going back to when you start out, first start out, and I say you'd use one camera, that's when you're doing it for free. <laughs> when you start taking money, make sure you've got two cameras. Two for three. For, for free, not three. Two for free, for free, yeah. You yeah. just, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to mess up. No. Nope. So multiple cameras, each with a microphone on each on the top of each one. So but, sorry, Cameron. when I started, I've got I've literally just ordered. Um, well, came came yesterday a uh, Rode Video Micro. Yeah. What we're using now. Yeah. So I've got two of them, um, and I actually picked that up for thirty five quid. Right. Thirty five <laughs> quid. Which is nothing. There's Which no is excuse. Brilliant. There is no excuse for a bad audio. Nope. When it's that cheap, just to put. A nice microphone on the top. It's a little bit quieter than the Rode Video Mic Pro, yeah. not the Pro Plus, the Pro. Because it's not powered, I'm assuming. It, There's no battery, yeah. is there? But all I've done is crank up the gain in, inside the camera, okay. and I've got really, really good audio. I've done some tests yesterday um, to kind of get them both the same, and they're great. But going back to what I use, yeah, I've got a Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, I can't actually remember what I paid for this. They're it's, closer to two to three hundred, aren't they? For I think it's a little the, bit. Or is that the Pro Plus? Pro, Pro Plus. I think this is about one fifty, one sixty. Oh, right, okay. So, but yeah, really, really good audio from this. Um, one thing I like about it is it's got a plus twenty, a minus twenty decibels on the back. So if you need, if you're in a big room and you need to pick up a bit more audio, you just put it. Up you just punch it up, and it's it's, it's great. 
Um, the one thing I've got into now is using these little beautiful things. Now, the last wedding John shot with me, he was doing the video, I was doing the photography, and he pulled out three of these little things, and he's been raving about them for ages, and I <laughs> haven't really tested them, and I was very much of... Yeah, yeah, okay, John, all right, yeah, well, we'll try it. And then when it comes to shooting for me, it was like, no, I'm, I'm miking everyone up. They are actually very discreet. They are very um, discreet. And you have to remind me now, if you put one, where did you put them all? I put them in the pocket with the, the little pocket chief, I think is what you call it, where the yeah. flower goes. Yeah. So it's kind of hidden. Um, if I just do that, it's a bit thicker, but it's, it's yeah, quite... It's quite discreet. Yeah. It is quite discreet. I'll tell you so what, turn one on now, and we'll record the rest of this with one in I that position, see. and you'll be able to hear at least how John sounds. And I'll put a little clip over in a second, and you can see. But they are very tiny. They're a lot smaller than I thought. And how much do these retail for now? They are around about seventy nine, between seventy nine and eighty five. They kind of fluctuate. That's pounds. The price so under hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's under hundred pound. Under hundred dollars. And so, so who did you mic these up with now? You have to remind me, you put... I put one on the registrar, yeah, which will be conducting the, ceremony the in celebrant America. in America. Yeah. Um, I put one on the groom, yeah. and a, uh, I think a sister was doing a reading or something. That's right. So I put yeah. one on the sister doing the reading. Yeah. Um, and then I still use DRO5s on a little Manfrotto pixie, as they call them. Um, I still put these on tables for backups. I normally hide them in the flowers. Yeah. Um, and then this is kind of a third backup on the camera. And it really was when I was starting to put the edit together and listening to the sound, that really was backup. And I, I actually thought going from these and then flicking to the sound on that, I thought it was just in-camera mic. Um, the sound quality on these are exceptional. I'm yeah. very, very impressed. Um, and I have ordered some for myself. <laughs> so he has made he has made a sell there and we'll put a link to these and we'll put a link to as much as we can in the description so you yeah. so you know exactly what we're talking about and not getting anything mixed up um but yes audio audio yes. is key there are one advantage of these as well they record in a wav format so they're higher quality and i think it's 44.1 kilohertz now that so. has gone slightly over my head because <laughs> i know roughly <laughs> where that lies in the spe sound spectrum but yeah. I think standard, you can, with these ones, you can do 48 and 44.1. Um, for instance, in Final Cut, uh, the kind of default is 48. So okay. I change everything to 44.1. So Just it doesn't... Just a crisper, clearer sound, is that... 48 is clearer, but if you've got 48 and 41, over a long period of time, so say speeches, they will slowly drift out the sync. Oh, that's good. To, uh, that makes sense now. Now, I well, didn't quite know that. That mm. does make sense I now. got caught out once when I was using these two... What was I using? Because you sync up a 30-minute ceremony, and by the end, one is a couple of frames out at the end. Yeah. And I've had that, and I've always had to put a cut in the middle and just adjust it. But um. So I have got a Sony... So these are the Sony TX650s. Um, and... I've got a Sony UX560 as well, which you can plug a lav into. Which is what I've always used for the green. Yeah. Um, and I got caught out using, I think I'd ordered it the day before a wedding. And I didn't, I changed the settings a little bit, but I didn't change the settings completely. Quite right, yeah, that makes sense. So when it comes to the speeches, compared to this, I got caught out with 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. Okay. Um, and the sound slight drifted out, so I had to cut and move it a little bit. And that's just a pain. Yeah. The, the other thing I've tried to do with my work is streamline it and make sure that everything I'm doing makes sense in the edit. Uh, so I've certainly, I don't overshoot anymore. I make sure that I capture all the key moments and I'm always rolling to a certain extent. Um, but it's trying to make sure you can keep your editing as simple as you can yeah. with the number of weddings that we do, the number yeah. of weddings that John's going to be doing this year already. How many weddings have you booked up for? Uh, 42 this year. So 29 last year, 42 this year. Which is, is a fantastic upward curve. From it's your, massive. It's amazing. To have that many. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed because I never did that many. Uh, when I started out, I think the first year was 12. 
and 20 and it stayed around that until I sort of went full time. Mm. Now you are full time. I am full time. Yeah. You went full time from the off more or less, didn't you? I did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been self-employed for coming up 10 years now. I started off with web design. Um, that went downhill. Um, <laughs> and when I met my wife six years ago, um, who with her father was already well versed in weddings and wedding yeah, photography. Yeah, established wedding photographer. She's been shooting since she was. She's been shooting weddings since she was fourteen. Um, yes. So yeah, she's been shooting for a long time. And shout out to Sam and capture the moment. Yes. And Jeremy. Great. Hello. I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I met Sam and obviously got into the wedding industry with with her. Um, obviously met yourself. Matt did film my wedding. Um, it's a natural choice. Absolutely, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, and I, I, again, I took a lot of inspiration from Matt and Sam had mentioned to me what about doing film and he was like, mm, never done it before, but I'm quite confident just to dive into something and just go, right, let's see what I can do. So yeah, I purchased the Panasonic cameras Matt was using Panasonic, so he was kind of like, okay, I'll use... I, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing I remember you saying, because I was using Panasonic, it was all, what shall I get? And I remember yeah. I had the G7. Yeah. I keep pointing up there, it's because it's hanging it's over there. us on the overhead rig. Not that we're using it today. Um, and the GH5, but I remember saying, I think I'm sure the G80 had just come out. G80 and long come out, yeah. Um, and it was stabilised, and it was like, you're basically buying a baby GH5, and the only difference was... The non-stop recording Because I think they use the same... Yeah, non-stop recording. A um, couple of codecs. Which the GH5 has and the GH80 doesn't. Yeah, because they share the same sensor. Yeah, and it's... Seriously, the G80... It's a It's the only camera to recommend, that we recommend for wedding video work mm. or any sort of commercial video work. The 4K image that you get from it is superb. And I have actually taken photos with it as well. And I'll get some of their photos over to you. I'll try and put a few up on so screen now. Maybe. On there. Maybe. Uh, maybe. If not, um, cut, I'm going to cut this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, w which were great. Um, i done some prep work for a bridal prep work for a, for a, a good mate of mine, and they were fantastic. Um, shot in raw. Great. That's good. Great, great camera. So, as we kept saying, sound is key. But I do want to talk very briefly on gimbals. Gimbals have made a huge difference in the last three years to the way huge. that I shoot wedding films. Mass, yeah, massive. I think it's it's made a, just just the way you can make a film look, the smooth cinematic movement, mm -hmm. I'd like to think I am a bit of a master with a gimbal. I'm not just trying to blow my own trumpet, I like to think, I, in fact, a lot of the shots that you'll see on B-roll from my other videos, and it looks like I'm on a slider. I'm not on a slider, that's purely by hand, I've managed to keep a steady yeah. hand and get some great work with it. Now I have only recently changed my gimbal to the Weeble Lab, um, which I absolutely love. Love that, love this gimbal, it's absolutely wonderful. I've only had it for a matter of two, three months. Um, I'm gonna try and do a review on that very soon. It, that's a lot more involved, it, but it is superb, absolutely fantastic. Now what do you use? You're on the same Zion brand. I use, yeah, I use the Zion, Zion, Zin, whatever they call it. Zion, yeah, Zion. Um, yeah. I use the Crane V2, not the Crane 2. Yeah. It got confusing. It did get it confusing, get confusing. I don't know why. Well, <laughs> I use the Crane V2, which has got a heavier payload, I believe. Yes. So you can add heavier cameras. Um, yeah. Even though these cameras are nothing, um, you can adjust the motors in the software. So yeah. you can adjust the power of the motors. I don't know if you can do it with, with this. Don't know. Bad boy. I haven't done a full test on it, which is why you haven't <laughs> seen a review. There's a few things I want to still figure out. Um, I am jealous he's got this because I wanted it first. Uh, but yeah, I use the crane. Um, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, like I said, my more, I mean, your first dance shots are more kind of static. Yeah, um, I tend to, which is can be difficult. If the couple don't move, I like to let the couple move in the shot. But then I like your shots when you do then move in spiral. and spiral luckily i work with my wife a lot so she kind of understands that i can move in front of her and she can shoot around me yes uh, which which always helps 
it's hard and you're, you're looking you mentioned with his wife because she'll be doing the photography and it's making sure that you're not stepping on the photographer's toes yeah. you both have an equally important job I do both and I think they are both especially in the last couple of years equally important um, so I do appreciate you are slightly invading the space by going yeah. and getting that shot and I've got to be honest all the photographers I've worked with um, over the last 18 months um, have understood and they've said just carry on get your shot walk in front of me I've always asked them I mean it's always great to liaise with your photographer communication very uh, important absolutely um, and they've been great and they've said yeah just jump in front that's fine and I've jumped out of the way when they've asked me to, to get a certain shot so yeah um, as long as you've got your coverage then I don't think it I don't think it matters really um, but yeah I, I'm more kind of if the bride is spinning this way I will spin the other way and slow it down yeah um, and it does look lovely and that, there'll be a shot right now as we're looking at it now yeah. you can see this is a lovely shot to to have in there and it's one that I should look to involve in I think if I had a package where there was maybe two videographers it depends you want to make sure you've got your wide shot always yeah. have a wide shot I always again wide shot my GH4R which will be my 6400 now um, that will be on a wide unlimited recording time I can just set and forget stick that in the corner because if anything happened to my gimbal or anything happened to the camera on the gimbal or whatnot I've got a backup you might have me walking around with a dead camera but <laughs> yeah but they've it's still good to got, have and yeah the, they've still got the shot the reason why I think we, we've stuck with the Zion range or Zion range I mean I had the crane one so I had the very first one that came out um, and it was it was a bit of a revelation it just totally changed the way I made mm. my wedding films and how I how I shot them um, in fact, most of the day, other than the ceremony speeches and first dance, my camera was just on the gimbal at all times. Um, the design of that had a, f a couple of issues, nothing major at the time. I just got used to it and off we went. Then you've got the Crane V2. V2, yeah. Um, not the Crane 2, the Crane V2, which came out before the Crane 2. Or did it come out after? They came out very close before, together. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, which had the extra payload and I was already jealous. There was a few extra design features that helped like tripod feet which you didn't get on the mark one yeah um and just it just seemed to be a little bit easier to use a bit more chunkier i suppose um but my v1 i had for yeah i think close to three years um i sold it on i had no issues with it it just worked flawlessly for all that time um and it was only because this came out and i saw uh, another youtuber jason Jason Wong, I believe, yeah. had it set up with this monitor on the back, um, which is wonderful to use. And I cannot stress enough how good this is. And this is a little bit of a, I'm flexing a little bit just to, to show it off. But I, when, when budget allows and you're looking to upgrade, I would probably upgrade or get a, a gimbal like this. I saw this for sale, this gimbal for £369 last week. Whoa. which was very cheap that was imported but it was from an importer that I've used before um, it was on offer but it, it it blew my mind as to how good yeah, that and how cheap that is how good very, this is and how cheap you can very good price for. I mean I I love this setup because the one downfall of the 6500 is the screen on the back in direct That's sunlight is awful yeah, the it's, Sony, the GH5 isn't much better, the Panasonic range isn't much better. It's really, really bad. I mean, in, in this sort of light, if you're in a ceremony, stuff like that, it's fine. But in sunlight, not even direct sunlight, if it's just bright outside, it's no good. Yeah, so, and we, <laughs> we live in the UK, which isn't renowned for no. constant sunshine, <laughs> and it's still difficult. If you're in more uh, a sunnier part of America, or any parts of the US, you'll find... Yeah. it can be a bit of an issue um, but there's no until now there has been no way to put a monitor no. with your gimbal unless no. you're talking extra rigs and things hanging out and the whole point of a gimbal is you've got a small camera lightweight you can carry it around all day um, I, I think mean, I managed I'm, to build up my arm muscles pretty good I mean I'm <laughs> looking at this now and I'm super excited to just I am going to put my Sony on it in a bit and play but yeah I mean what's the way you can just, you can just see here you can just see how much bigger the screen is and when you're using that it, it's fantastic the setup I've got and it was thanks to Jason Wong 
was a little small rig adapter, so you put a hot shoe, um, which gives you a cold shoe, sorry, on there. And that's how that monitor is, on, is, is used on there. And it's, I haven't got it turned on, I've just got it all locked off, but there's no obstruction. You can just tilt so you it. So can, you can still you tilt. Can see, yeah, full movement, it doesn't affect it in any way. You do have to use a slightly smaller, smaller Sony NPF battery on the back. Right, okay. Um, but the battery lasts, one of those batteries lasts all day. Um, the battery power on this, like the Zion Crane, the V1, and I'm sure yours is the same, that you charge it, it and it lasts forever. for several weddings. Yeah. So you get two sets of batteries, you always have a fully charged set, and when one goes, you just swap them out at the start of the day. Um, I think I've done seven weddings on one charge. Yeah, it's, they, it's amazing what you can get the technology-wise, and again, none of this was here when we started no. out. In fact, just behind my head there, you'll see um, a Canon XM1, which was the first camcorder I used. I started in wedding films, and that camera, and that's why I sat there, was the first camera I ever used to film a wedding. And it was awkward. It was cumbersome, the way you held it. It was sort of, it's not really on the shoulder, but it's got a top handle. <laughs> got a... Um, it wasn't even HD. This is, we're going on. What was it, 720? Or... No. Um, no, 5... 530 I think it was wow. something strange so it wasn't even yeah it wasn't even 720p or anything like that but it had a 3 CCD a 3 CCD chip which was broadcast quality at the time so you did have great levels uh, dynamic range in it and that was probably its only benefit over your standard camera um, and in fact every camera back then shot at 50 frames or 60 frames per second they didn't shoot at 25 frames per second so we didn't have the option to give it that cinematic Change, yeah. look. It all looked like it was just shot on a home video camera. Mm. That had 25 frames per second as an option and you were able to get that cinematic look. And now it's gone the other way that we can just change the edit and yeah. export it at 25 frames per second. And if you shoot it at 50 or 60 frames per second, you've got your lovely slow-mo yeah. or more. Um, so it's quite interesting how that's worked out. But in a roundabout way, what I'm saying is this technology just wasn't there. That camera would never have got on a gimbal, so gimbals were never made. It wasn't even thought of. Um, and just the last three years alone, you can you look at the world of drones. I've gone and got myself a license for drone work and use that at weddings. That and a gimbal, my videos can look so cinematic. 4K slow-mo, mm -hmm. and it looks beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm always envious of Matt's shooting and his, color grading the way he guesses the, the look is it, it is lovely um, and, and that's that's just getting your own style though I think yeah, it, once you you find your feet with it it took me style. yeah because your good, style's changed a lot in just 12 months my style yeah I mean I started off and yeah everyone will say when they start off it's just awful <laughs> um, mine was just awful and luckily my wife got me a couple of free weddings she was photographing she said to her couple do you want a free wedding film? And they were like, oh yeah, we'll we'll have a free wedding film. Yeah. And looking, when I'd first, they were like, oh yeah, that's great. But I don't think they do any different. And then look, me looking back at it now, from where I've got, what software I've got, and colouring tools and stuff like that, it, yeah, it's changed. Over the last 18 months, it's changed dramatically. And I've kind of found in the last four or five months, the colours and everything and the way I want to... Mm to shoot now and how I, how I color grade and everything and yeah it's just dramatically dramatically yeah. changed I still want to buy a lot more stuff but yeah we all want to buy a lot more stuff and that that never <laughs> stops that no. just never stops and it's something that I think it's it's just trying to keep your feet grounded at the start mm -hmm. this really is a bit of advice this this whole this whole interview is a bit of advice really yeah. for those that are looking to start out um, there may be one or two things that some experienced uh, videographers pick up from it, um, especially the sound things. That's something just in the last year I picked up from John, just extra bits that I can do to make that sound even better, yeah. deliver that quality sort of viewing experience for your couples. And it also helps using these, and I've been asked, now my edits and Matt's edits, there's no kind of narrative over the top. No, so, no. But I've been asked, I've got three weddings this year that I've asked for narrative over the top. Yeah, so, which you've probably seen from, if you, if you look at 
some of the very best videographers in the country and um, mm -hmm. especially I say that in the UK but in the US it's been a star for a while where you might you might do it slightly out of the timeline might be slightly out of oh, sync so, yeah. and you're doing a voiceover or something the key from the wedding a speech or um, a reading from the wedding over the top at the start and you sort of it gives it I think a, ho a Hollywood feel to it and it isn't something that I've necessarily jumped on board with I have done it if I've been asked for it um, like you say and you're now being asked for it yeah there is a videographer though in Wales South Wales um, we both know him um, he still does a linear edit but he puts the narrative over the top okay. so he when he's doing the bridal prep yeah he will get the groom to speak about the bride and kind of just overlay it over the top yeah, or his part of the ceremony yeah so it and I've looked at them and they're really, really nice. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to have a little nose now. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll have, <laughs> we'll have a little, have a little talk about that. But um, again, yeah, so, and then editing, as we're finishing off, editing is, is you will just find your own style. Yes. Um, don't Absolutely. worry about what anyone else is doing. Don't worry about, is my work good enough? The first thing you can do, especially for the first year, go out there, get a dozen weddings, even if, or even half a dozen weddings that you'll do for free. Get your star, especially if you haven't got any experience filming, um, and just just get out there and do it. Yeah. And I'd love to see what you come up with. If you're in your first year as a wedding videographer, let us know. Send us in your stuff. Send us some. It'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great to look at them. I mean, there are a couple of YouTubers out there that kind of do critique on yeah, wedding films. Yeah, I'm not necessarily we're going we're to critique them. Critique but them, but it'd be nice to look at them. Yeah, really we, nice to, to like, look. We're more than happy to give some feedback on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it informative. Um, it's been great to have you on, John. Thank you very much if for having me. If you want to see John again, let us know. If you don't want to see him again... Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we get any dislikes on those, because you don't like John. And that's fair enough. Um, but no, thank you very much for coming on. No problem. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Do let us know any other thoughts you've got, anything else you want to see, any other style of videos that you want to see from us. Um, just give me a shout put it in the comments below don't forget to hit the like button if you did subscribe. actually like it subscribe subscribe hit the bell notification you know the drill but we will uh, catch you in the next one hello welcome to a slightly different episode of Roto today I'm joined by John Ashley of the two company that's a good OT <laughs> <laughs> we're on Vision Avenue Wedding. That's films. it. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> right. Okay. Hello. How are you? <laughs>